Good morning. So nice to have you join us for another three plus you. Kevin First from First Financial Group is going to open the show with us this morning. And don't you love it when an expert in his field, which Kevin is, comes in and says, you know what? I want to talk today about how the truth is I don't know everything. I love that. It's true. But you know enough to know that you don't know everything. And when you're dealing as you are with people's money, their futures, their wealth management, as you like to stress, you want to make sure that you've got a team around you, people who can support you. And that's kind of what you've collected over the years. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, things come up all the time, either whether it's legal, whether it's about a will, a trust, whether it's about going through probate court, <coughs> which you have to have attorneys for all those things. Um, or if it's a tax question that comes up, we just got through the tax season. So mm -hmm. people are, you know, wanting to know, you know, how come I paid so much in taxes? How come this happened? How come that happened? Yeah. And if you don't have the resources to go to, um, then I guess the client has to find it themselves. It's, it's tough to do. You know, we live in a world now where because of the internet, we can all pretend that we are experts in lots of things. I mean, you can do everything online. You can kind of bypass the people who've spent a lifetime developing expertise in an area that comes at a great risk. So mm -hmm. part of what you know is not just the financial side of it, you know the psychology side of it too. Mm -hmm. You a have to put bit. people at ease. Yeah, yeah, I think you do. And, and have, be able to get answers for them because that's mm -hmm. what they want. Mm -hmm. um, I, we had a, a client, she passed away. Um, they have insurance policies that no one knew about so there's no beneficiaries on them. And so mm -hmm. Now what are we going to do with those insurance policies? Right. And so uh, there's just things you have to go through then with the client, with the attorney to try to make all that happen. But the heirs are wondering, like, what happened? How did this happen? So, so okay, let's play out a couple of scenarios then, mm -hmm. because you were telling me that some of the people who you do collaborate with, I don't mean that you have them on retainer, but right. you just, you trust them and they trust you. And so you have attorneys who you can refer to, you have right. CPAs, right. work with some funeral homes sometimes. Right. Right. So if someone came to you tomorrow and it's a couple, they're 72, just pretend. Um, and they are transferring their money maybe from, maybe they retired late. Mm -hmm. They have their 401k money now that they're putting in to you to do something with. Do you sort of counsel them for a while? Do you talk to them for a long time and try to find out what they know to then figure out what they might not be thinking of? Yes, that's the, exactly what we do. And so we have a, it's a five or six step process depending on where they're at to try to guide them through um, what it is that, that we don't know about them, what it is that they're wanting to do, and then help them understand here's the process that we have to go through. And it is, well, I think what people forget when they go through that, mm -hmm. how messy it is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they can't, we try to paint the picture the best we can so we can help them understand and align with what their wants are and wishes are. And then we try to help them understand the reality of here's where we need to go based on what you're what, telling us. What do you mean how messy it is? What do you mean Oh, it's exactly? a mess because, because, so I had someone come in yesterday. They worked four or five different places. They have 401ks at every place that they've not done anything uh, with. Okay. They have their own uh, IRAs. They have their savings, their checking. They have an inheritance that they receive. They have a, a rental property that they've got. Okay. And so, so the that's list goes where, on. So that's where then, I would imagine, you pick up the phone and call a, a CPA who you trust to say, how do I merge this money and help them on a tax side? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes we know the answer and so we can help walk them through and say, okay, here's what we need to do. Mm -hmm. And then once we get all the information, and we're looking at it, if we have questions, that's when we would go to the CPA, the attorney, and say, hey, here's what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we can do this or that or the other. Some things are simple. We can do them. It's not a problem. But there right. are complications that come up. Um, and why do they have certain assets? Sometimes people asset, have assets that they bought 20, right. 30 years ago, and they don't even know why they have it. There is a degree of creature <laughs> comfort. I talk about my mom all the time. Kevin sat down today and said, how's your mom? <laughs> so uh, maybe it's the girl in her. I'm the same way. But she has uh, certainly, you know, somebody who manages her money. But then she likes having some accounts that are just 
savings accounts, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but she likes two different ones, two different banks. She doesn't right. like to have all of her eggs in one basket. Right. Drives my brothers crazy. Yep. Makes yep. sense to me. Yeah. So is that, the, again, the kind of thing where you have to know the comfort level of the client? Yep. Yeah, because they have stuff everywhere. I mean, it's sometimes everywhere. And that's where mm -hmm. it's messy, trying to get them focused on, on what it is that we do, how we can help, and mm -hmm. then how to go through that process to either consolidate, or in some cases, they don't have any diversification, so then we want to get them uh, mm -hmm. more diverse in what they are uh, in. So mm -hmm. it's, it just depends on the client. Most of us who yeah. have children hope to leave money to our kids one mm -hmm. day. That's a big motivator mm -hmm. for why you save your money. Mm -hmm. Yet you also want to not be a burden to your kids, so you want to make sure you have enough yep. to cover you should the unexpected happen. Right. As you get older, um, like really older, or a health issue emerges or anything like that, I would think that it becomes almost paralyzing for some people because they need to have their money still be for their use but they need to begin thinking about switching some things to make it easier for their heirs correct is that right yeah i think that's right i think people wait too long sometimes and so then the depending on the health sometimes you can go t so far down the line you haven't asked anybody to help you for whatever reason it happens mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. and we're busy we're busy growing saving living our lives, our grandkids, our kids, all the things that we're involved in, social things, and then all of a sudden we turn 80 and we're like, oh my gosh, what happened? Mm -hmm. what How did do? I get here? Yeah, we've got all <laughs> these things that we um, have and now we want to start, now we start thinking about how we're going to pass this to the kids and what are the tax implications mm -hmm. and what is the probate cost and what, uh, you know, what do we have to put in place because if we do become incapacitated or have health problems, then what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. And so there's all those things that you have to think about. Then there's tax issues that come up when you start moving money too that you have to be aware of mm -hmm. or start consolidating. There's capital gains, there's um, dividends, there's all kinds of things that can come up that you just have to have. I don't know how people do it without somebody. Right. When we get in the middle of it, it's usually, like I said, it's not, it's not bad a mess. It's just messy in trying to walk through those mm -hmm. uh, steps that you need to do to kind of get things consolidated. Okay, then before <coughs> I let you run and show people how to get in touch with you, when someone mm -hmm. is under your umbrella, mm -hmm. do you reach out to them uh, like once a year? Do you rely on them to reach out to you? What's the maintenance, if you will? Uh, so twice a year is, is minimum, and that we reach out to them. We offer them to come in and go over things, review things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it depends on the complexities of what they've got going on. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it's three or four times a year that we meet with them, just depending on, and I've got one that, you know, 96 and the complexities in her estate are, it's almost monthly. So really? Have, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is no, that because she's 96 and she just needs to know 96, no more? kids, ah. you know, a large estate. and So you want to hold her hand? Comp, you have to. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned, uh, I roughly talked about it, the funeral home side of things. Is that because sometimes life insurance policies are not quick to pay, or what's your involvement on the funeral home? On the funeral, so the funeral home, sometimes the beneficiaries aren't correct. Or oh. sometimes the beneficiaries, you know, a lot of times people will buy a life insurance policy through the funeral home. Gotcha. And so they just put their spouse on there as a beneficiary. They forget about it. They don't tell anybody. There's no contingent beneficiary, and then they pass away, and now what do you? Now you're either back in probate or trying to negotiate with the insurance company to see how they can settle the claim to get the money to pay for the funeral home. Well, thanks for sharing yeah. some time with us this morning. I enjoyed it. Thank you. You can find him at First Financial Group. It's a family-owned uh, business here in town, been around for a long time, helping people manage their wealth and grow it. Thus, the website, growkeepleave.com. You can give him a call at 899-8555, First Financial Group. Thanks. Thanks, Julie. Most kitchens have spaces that are frustrating. I couldn't see or reach the back of my corner cabinet. Do you have deep lower cabinets that require you to drop to your hands and knees to get to the back? Or a pantry that's completely disorganized and impossible to navigate?